Hey guys, so this video is going to be a little different. I'm going to be talking a lot about the Electron carburetor and why I actually prefer it over a stock carburetor and even why I'd prefer it over fuel injection in the case of a four stroke or in the case of my 300, uh, I'd prefer it over TPI. And I figured rather than stand around looking at the carburetor while talking about it in my garage, I'd instead just show you some of my beautiful backyard down here in Southwest Utah. Okay, so first let's start off. Electron sent me this carburetor to test, and if you guys know me, you know that I'm far more interested in building trust with you than I am for shilling for a sponsor. So I've put a lot of hours into this carburetor, a lot of miles, lots of abuse, uh, before making this video or stating my opinion. And one of the first things I tell to anybody who is going to send me parts or gear for a sponsorship is that I'm going to be totally honest because my producers have supported me far more than sponsors ever have. So building trust with my audience is far more important to me. Um, one thing that I want to add is that Lectron makes carburetors for lots of different bikes, including the DRZ400. And just spoiler alert, after my experience with the Lectron, I would happily pay full price to put one in my DRZ. They're really, really good. Um, also, in this video, I'm not saying that carbureted is the best for everybody, you know, blanket statement. I'm just giving you the reasons why I prefer carburation, particularly the Electron Carb over TPI or fuel injection. Um, not everybody is going to think the same way as I do, but for me, you know, it came down to saving a boatload of money and reliability of carburetors once they're tuned correctly and just the difference in power delivery from, you know, added tuning and adjustability options. Now, guys in flatter areas that don't change altitude a whole lot, you may be better off with just a good solid tune on a stock carburetor. For me, I live in a place with lots of elevation changes from 1,500 to 8,000 feet, so sometimes in a single day. So for me, the Electron Carb ended up saving me a lot of money, fuel, time, and jetting headaches. So I'll just tell you my experience and then you can decide for yourself if it's worth it. So with that said, the reason why I bought a 2017 KTM 300 XCW is because my good friend Garrett let me ride his and I just fell in love. Um, I'll put a video about that in the upper right corner, but uh, I've ridden previous model year 300s and I have to say that the counterbalance motor was a huge game changer. I was not a two-stroke fan before that counterbalancing came out. Uh, but when I picked up my own 300, the stock carburetor had big problems. I think the previous owner had left the whole bike in a pond, and I'm not <laughs> exaggerating. Um, it leaked unless I turned off the petcock. It was, it was jetted correctly, but it still sputtered and had a hard time starting. And the biggest thing is I was only getting around 15 miles per gallon, and it just wasn't smooth like Garrett's 300 was. So I checked the forums to see what I could do because 40 miles to a tank just wasn't going to work for all of these rallies that I host down here in Southwest Utah. Uh, at first I thought that I might just have to sell the bike and fork over another few thousand dollars for a newer TPI model. But, uh, you know, and that would get the range that I needed and it would be able to handle the, the range of altitudes that I ride at. But a newer model year would cost thousands of dollars more and I just, I don't have that kind of money. So, um, and I also shy away from fuel injection systems uh, or similar systems because on these rallies that I host, you know, a lot of guys come on KTMs and Husqvarna's and nothing against them. I own a couple, um, but I've just seen far too many problems with fuel pumps or ruptured fuel lines. It's sprayed in my eyes before um, and computer and mapping issues that end rides. So I know that TPI isn't the exact same as FI, but I just feel comfortable with a simpler, you know, kind of time-tested system. So I looked into getting a bigger tank for my 2017, which an IMS would cost about $300, and it would extend my range by about 15 miles, which still isn't acceptable for the range that we covered during these rallies. It would also change the ergos and, you know, more fuel means more weight. Um, guys in the forums suggested a JD Jet kit, which might increase the range, which was $80. Uh, as for the leaking, I tried a few times to pull the carb and just to get the float to work correctly. And after a few failed attempts, I, I knew I'd need a mechanic. So that would probably come to another $150 or so. So to get my stock carb working and the range that I needed, I was looking at spending about $500 
or so dollars. And as it turns out, that's about what a new OE carburetor costs. Um, so then I saw a forum post about the Electron Carb. And basically, it's a carburetor that just replaces a stock carburetor. It doesn't require any jet jetting. It functions at any altitude that's reasonable. Um, it's highly tunable, and it vastly increases fuel range. Uh, so it's all the benefits of a TPI system with the simplicity and reliability of a carburetor and far lower cost than swapping for a TPI bike in my case. Uh, it also happened that Garrett's 300 that I had been riding had Electron Carb on it all along and I just didn't know it. But it's so silky smooth and I just really, you know, from going from his bike to my bike, I just noticed that big difference. A huge benefit of the Electron over the stock carburetor was the fuel range. Uh, the guys in the forum said that the, their Electrons were getting about 80 miles with the stock tank. So I contacted Electron to see if we could work out some kind of a deal. And I state, as always, that any promotion would be totally honest. And, and they went ahead and sent me a carburetor. Um, so the guys in the forums were not wrong. The Electron, you know, doubled my fuel range. No lie, uh, went from about 15 miles per gallon to about 30 plus miles per gallon. So with the amount of riding that I do on my rallies and just for fun, the fuel savings alone, if I, were, if I had bought the Electron, would have actually paid for the Electron in this first year. So that's a pretty substantial savings um, when you start to look at your fuel mileage and the cost of fuel. So when it came down to it, uh, a carbureted XCW with Electron turned out to be far cheaper than a TPI model, but still with many of the benefits, you know, and tried and true carburetor reliability plus more adjustability. Um, because with the Electron, I still can adjust the red, yellow, and green power valve springs to either tune down or ramp up that, you know, two-stroke pipe hit. Um, and while aside from small adjustments, the TPI models I don't think they have that analog option anymore of the of the different springs. Maybe they have mapping. I haven't monkeyed with them enough uh, to know, but maybe somebody who has one can can educate us there on that in the comments. So when it comes to oil injection on the newer two-stroke motorcycles, uh, I've heard that they're pretty reliable, but they're still all pretty well brand new. So long-term reliability is still a bit of an unknown. However, I don't really mind mixing gas. And just like carbs versus FI or TPI, I'd rather have a little more peace of mind and reliability than a little more convenience. So since I'm leading these rallies and putting on a lot of miles on my bikes, um, they have to be absolutely re reliable. And it's really, really embarrassing to be leading a ride uh, with people who come out here and pay me to ride with me and, ha and have my bike break down or have issues. Um, and it's even worse when I'm riding alone and stranded out in the desert. So that's why I work really hard to find good parts and gear, not only to keep my bike going for these rallies and for my safety, um, but to keep you guys happy. Because if I'm rep recommending crap, then you know, you're know you you're not gonna watch. So it's important that I recommend quality stuff. Um, with that being said, does the Electron have any cons? Well, yeah, it does. Um, like I mentioned before, if you live in a flat area, where you're not going to change altitude, you know, a solid tune on a stock carb that's working well is probably going to be a better investment. Um, you, you're probably not going to need Electron. The choke on the Electron is behind the pipe on the right side of the motorcycle. So that's kind of annoying, but at least if you're choking the bike, the, the, the pipe's not going to be hot when you start it. So, you know, kind of a non-issue. Just a little annoying. Um, you also need to keep in mind that on the 300, the Electron is slightly longer end-to-end -end than a stock carburetor. So you'll, you know, if you have an XC, you will need to buy the boot for an XCW. Um, and since the Electron is slightly longer, it has actually warped my airbox boot just enough to make the air filter not seal quite right. So if you get Electron and you install that thing, make sure that you check on you know, the seal of your airbox uh, to your air filter. Um, in my case, it took a little bit of finagling, but my, fil my filter now seats just how it should and the bike runs perfectly. Uh, I had to do just a little bit of tuning to the metering rod uh, out of the box. Um, and you know what? While these adjustments can be done with the carb still on the bike, um, dealing with the little Allen head screws and pulling out the slide uh, in that tight space 
it was still kind of a pain. Um, however, you know, at least you're not pulling off the whole carb to try to adjust it. Uh, and luckily, once it was tuned to basically how I love it, um, I haven't needed to touch it since. No matter where I'm at elevation-wise, it was pretty easy. Set it and forget it. Awesome. Um, as for installation, it was way easier than I thought. Um, Electron and Jeff Slavens and Rocky Mountain ATV all have really good installation videos for this. I, I felt like I didn't need to make one. Um, I'm a mechanical idiot, and it took me less than 45 minutes to do. So, you know, guys, if you're interested in having many of the benefits of a fuel-injected bike while keeping the simplicity and reliability of a carburetor but without the hassles of jetting or needles, I really strongly recommend the Electron Carb. Um, of all of the parts that I put on my dream bike, I think the Electron has made the biggest difference and it saved me thousands of dollars over having to, you know, sell my bike and buy a TPI model for those benefits. And it will also save me money on premix for a long, long time to come. So if you want to go check it out and see reviews from other people and see specs and pictures and see if they make one for your bike, um, I've put a link in the description below to everrideadv.com where you can find every single part that I put on this dream bike dirt build. Uh, and so you can kind of follow along. Anyway, thank you so much to Electron for sending this carb for me to test. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and much love. Ever ride out.